Uh, like I earlier said, we, we're talking about community. We we'll talked about community started last week. We did an introduction to it last week. Today, we're just going to look at how does it affect our earning money, right? How does it influence our earning money? That's what uh, chapter six is all about. Uh, so what it's been doing is been taking each, going along that a pyramid and looking at different topics. The first we started with is our origin and upbringing affects our way of our earning money, our growing money, and our enjoying money. So that's the same thing we're here doing with community. We did an introduction last week. Today we're looking at how it affects our ability to earn money. Next we could look at how it affects our ability to grow money. And uh, we'll close uh, upper week with how it affects our ability to enjoy money, you know, and that's been a model uh, she's worked out in, in the whole of the book. It's pretty much looking at our earning money, our growing money, and our enjoying money, and those are those are positive, you know, uh, titles around money. We all want to earn money one way or the other, you know. We all wish. Money would just be given to us free of charge, you know. Uh, and also, there is something about any money, you know, that completes us, that fulfills us. And also, as uh, people are uh, created after the image of the creator, you know, we have everything in us to grow money because money is a seed on its own, and there are ways by which we can make we can make it in, increase it, as it were. You know, and the last part is, is it's not about the money, it's about the enjoyment that we'll get out of it. It's about who we are becoming as we earn the money. Because nobody eats money, right? We don't go for money for, for money's sake. We go for money for the things money can do, not because we just want to store money. It's the things that it affords us, the opportunities it opens up to us. You know, that's the only reason we, we go to hand to grow money. And if you're not able then to use money, then it's a waste, right? If, you, if all you make, you're not able to enjoy, you're not able to use it, it's not giving you the opportunities, it's not opening doors for you, it's not making you a better person, then there's something wrong, you know? You're not going to truly make all, you're not going to be fulfilled, you know? And you know, when we talk about success, there's success and there's success. True success is that one which makes you fulfilled because you are achieving something that deep inside you have set for yourself. Now, everybody can see a success, but you might not be a success because for as long as you're not fulfilled, for as long as you're not happy, it doesn't matter if you're the president of a company, you're a billionaire, for as long as you're not happy, you're not fulfilled, you're not a success, right? Success is that which makes you fulfilled that which achieves a goal that you have set for yourself. Not a goal someone has set for you, but a goal you have set for yourself, right? And that goal might, it, it, it can be different from any other person's own, might be night and day, you know, from every other person's own. And not everybody's goal is to make money or make so much money, you know? It's, so it, success is a personal thing. It's, it's a function of, what is the goal that you have set for yourself and your ability to attain it? You know, that's when you say you're successful, right? All right, let's just still go back to the material here. And she kind of puts a quote on every chapter. And she has this one, a virtue of a wise man is to gather without greed. And that's very important, you know. Uh, someone would say that, you know, let you put money in your head, not in your heart. You know, money is a good servant but a terrible master. Money is good for as long as you are using it, you are sending it on errand. When money starts sending you on errand, you're in trouble. Because money is a terrible master, right? The intent and the use of money is to serve us, is to be a servant. And for as long as money is your servant, you're, there's a right positioning with money. But if you ever allow money to be your master, then you're in trouble, you know? That means then, then truly, the, that's when that scripture or that popular word, where we say the love of money is the root of all evil. What, it, what it's truly saying is that when you become a servant to money, then, you, then there's no limit to the evil that you can, 
get yourself into. And that has nothing to do with you being rich. More poor people are under that spell than rich people because the love of money, you love money and you become a slave to money when you don't have it. And there are things around you that you need to do. But when your landlord is after you, when there's a school fees to pay, when there's hunger, all right, money can become your master at that point in time because it's like there's a need that you, you, you think, you similarly think is higher or more than life, right? Yeah, the money is your master if because you lose money, you, you commit suicide or any of those, right? So really, it's not the love of money per se that's the root of all evil. It is the serving of money. It is being in a, a just a pos position where money is your master, right? For as long as money is your slave, money is your servant, it is not the root of any evil. You are, you are rightly positioned, right, for it, right? But when money becomes your master, that is when there is evil at your doorstep, right? I love money, and there's nothing wrong in loving money. Loving money, you know, so when the Bible uses the word, the love, of, you need to understand the word love as a, a spectrum of meaning, right? There's nothing wrong in loving money for as long as that money is your servant. It is a love of money whereby the money becomes your master that will kill you, right? 